In today's video, I will talk about BIOS Patcher, a tool that may be able to enhance your retro BIOS that has seen its last update long time ago. It is a bit unfortunate, but the tool is only available for award BIOSes. I will use the DFI K6 BV3 Plus motherboard to demonstrate the process of how to use BIOS Patcher. The CPU installed on this motherboard is the modified AMD K6 2 Plus with unlocked level 2 cache. Essentially, it is a K6 3 Plus, but as you can see, the motherboard does not recognize the mobile version of the CPU. It is detected as a regular K6 3. The K6 2 Plus, on the other hand, the one with only 128KB of level 2 cache, is detected by the board without issues. We want to use BIOS Patcher today to inject new CPU microcodes so the motherboard can properly detect the CPU as the mobile version, the K6 3 Plus. You can download BIOS Patcher from the website rom.by. If you don't speak any Russian, you have to use a translator if you want to read what's written there. But for our purpose, we only have to scroll down a bit and here are all the files we need. I tried BIOS Patcher in version 4.23 only, which we are going to use today as well. We also need some additional files. LHA is a file compression tool for DOS which is required by BIOS Patcher. Then we also need CBROM, which you may know from my video where we changed the BIOS boot logo. And finally, you have to get the CPU microcodes. I pick all real to download. As far as I know, those microcodes include officially released CPUs only, so no engineering samples or other unreleased models. Those microcodes may make it possible for your motherboard to recognize and support CPUs, which were not yet available when the motherboard manufacturer released the last version of your BIOS. Unfortunately, the version of CBROM you download here is only working from the MS-DOS prompt within Windows. And even then, it doesn't work with every BIOS. For instance, it doesn't work with a BIOS from the ASUS P3BF and quits in a rather uncultivated manner. The best option would be to get CBROM in version 2.07. This version is also endorsed by the source itself. So let's not argue with the people who know way more than I do and get that version instead. Now we can extract all files into a single folder, make sure to use the correct CBROM in version 2.07 and maybe rename the BIOS patcher tool to something simpler like bp.exe. Now we are prepared and we can go ahead and start patching our ward BIOSes. I will focus on the DFI motherboard today, but we will look at other boards in the future as well. Let me change the number of visible lines so we can see what BIOS patcher is actually doing. The first thing I want to do is to look at the structure of the BIOS. We can use CBROM to show us what modules are present by using the forward slash D parameter. In total, we have four modules. The system BIOS, some extensions, the ACPI table and the EPA logo. And now it is time to let BIOS Patcher do some optimizations. You simply open BIOS Patcher and give it the BIOS binary file as an argument. This is all there is to it. BIOS Patcher goes through the BIOS file and looks for errors and possible improvements. If it looks like magic to you, then you're not alone. When BIOS Patcher is done, it provides a report on the screen. It detected a 2 megabit BIOS in version 4.5, which is correct. The DFI motherboard has an award BIOS in version 4.51. Next, we get a list of improvements BIOS Patcher is looking to apply to your BIOS. And the first one is already very interesting. New CPU support, and it looks like BIOS Patcher has fixed something. I assume it used the microcodes file and added the appropriate microcodes for the CPUs that can be supported by this motherboard. But BIOS Patcher can do much more. It can unlock hidden settings, add new frequency options, fix hard disk detection and size problems, as well as properly initialize UDMA disks. And there is much more. One final neat thing I want to mention is that it changes the default N to Y on the confirmation dialog when you try to exit the BIOS. For me at least, this is how it's supposed to be. In the lower part of the output we can see that CBROM is triggered to package some additional modules into the BIOS file. In this case, there are two more modules. Modul.tmp and start.tmp. Let's use CBROM once more to have a look how the new BIOS file looks like. We can see the two new modules at the end of the table. The other modules are still there and seem to be untouched. 
And here is the amazing feature of BIOS Patcher. It will not modify the existing BIOS, but rather add new blocks and modules. Then it will wire things up and provide you with a new flashable binary file. So why all this piggyback stuff? Well, later I will show you how you can switch between the original and the patched BIOS, without the requirement of flashing the BIOS chip again. You essentially have two BIOSes on your chip. Let's flash the patched BIOS to the DFI board. I'm sure you have seen me do this many times before, so I won't talk much about it. But it's always nice to see the flashing procedure anyway. And we're done. Now we can restart the PC and see what has changed. The first thing I can see is that the CPU is now properly detected as an AMD K63+. Looks like BIOS Patcher did great work. There is also a new line indicating that it was modified by BIOS Patcher. And in the BIOS, the default option when exiting is correctly set to Y. So how can you revert back to the original BIOS? Well. You just have to press the minus key while booting and the process will fall back to the original BIOS. None of the patched code will be executed and you will have the same state of your BIOS as if BIOS patcher never touched it. There is another way to trigger the fallback. By unplugging the keyboard. And by keyboard I mean the DIN or PS2 keyboard. So if you do not have such a keyboard connected during the boot process, the fallback will be triggered. If you do not want to have this failover option, because maybe you're using a USB keyboard, you can use the S option when using BIOS patcher to disable this feature. But you will lose the other fallback option with a minus key as well. After patching, I also checked if the performance changed. In this case, the patched BIOS does not improve the performance of the board. The enhancements are more of a visual nature. If you do have a board, however, that doesn't support any of the K62 Plus or the K63 flavors, but otherwise provides the required capabilities like split power planes and low enough core voltages, the BIOS patcher might help you resolve initialization issues that may lead to performance problems which usually have to be resolved using software. The final words I have for you today are Be careful when modifying your BIOS. Although BIOS patcher tries to be as careful as possible, there is no guarantee that the patched BIOS will work. If you encounter a problem during the patching process, do not flash the BIOS. With that said, we have reached the end of this video. So let me know in the comments if you have used BIOS patcher or if this is new to you. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.